Hi guys, and welcome to my first video for paper two on the A-level computer science exam. So in this series of videos that I'm going to be making for paper two, we're going to be covering all of these topics, starting with the first one in this video, computational thinking skills. Now, mainly this topic focuses on how we approach programs uh, from a high level and how we plan and organize the code that we're going to write. Now, the first concept we're going to cover is going to be abstraction. And the idea of abstraction basically involves taking everything that needs to be done um, in order to produce a computer program or some code and sort of boiling it down to the most essential data and operations that can make up that program. So the most basic data that needs to be input or output and the most basic operations that need to be accomplished. Now, if we're looking at a more A-level specific definition, it involves filtering out any information or data that is not necessary for a given task in the planning phase of a software program. Additionally, we can say it involves hiding any complex processes or technical details that are not relevant to the developer's goals in creating a program. So for example, if we were going to plan out a very complex app such as this, we'd probably start out with what we want to input, like what information the user wants to input, uh, what output they'd want to get, and then some of the basic operations need, that need to take place. So for example, some inputs may be an address or geographic location. Um, we might need to be able to place this geographic location on a map. And then our output might need to be directions to get to that location from our current location. Obviously, these actually are reasonably complex, but those are the most essential operations and data that need to be addressed in order to make a program. And hence, we are basically conducting abstraction or building an abstract model of that program. Now, abstraction can include some other processes and components. So part of abstraction would be decomposition. So decomposition involves breaking down a complex problem into smaller components, each of which can be addressed individually separate from the others. So if you have a course administration platform, like think about Blackboard or Moodle or something like that, there are going to be different components that need to work together in order to create a software platform that can allow us to create courses and then deliver them to students. So some of the major components might need might be course dealing with course enrollment, dealing with course completion, and dealing with course attendance. These are three components of a course administration system. And we should be able to break, we should be able to deal with each of these independently. So even write the code for each of these independently or develop it independently, and then connect them together to ultimately have a fully working software platform. Um, if we're talking about an online shopping platform, we might decomposition might involve separating that system into components for user authentication, product browsing, cart management, and payment processing. Now, this has two implications for our software programs. First, this is going to influence our planning phase, because in our planning, we're going to basically take one large problem, one large software program, and then divide that into individual components that make up uh, that particular program. Um, when we're actually doing the coding, we're going to code or we're going to build these we want to be able to build these component, these programs component by component independently from, from each other. And we're going to build it in a, essentially a modular fashion using program modules. Now, program modules refer to distinct and separate pieces of code that can handle specific functionalities in a larger program. Um, an example would be in a Python script. Let's say we're writing some code in Python, and we have different, uh, we want that program to have different capabilities or different functionalities. Using An example of using program modules would be having multiple functions in that program or methods if we're if you're using java parlance and having each one of our each functionality that we want our program each separate functionality we want our program to be able to, to, be able to address uh, be contained in that function so let's say for example writing a program to um, to calculate the average grade of the average grades of all students in a class then we might have we might want to have one function or one program module that actually calculates the average one module that's responsible for getting all the data as input, maybe from an Excel file. Um, another function, or again, this would be another program module that's responsible for organizing the output and outputting, outputting it into another Excel file, etc. Now, the idea behind program modules is that each module is responsible for a particular aspect of an application's operations. And we can develop, test, and then debug or look for errors in each one of these program modules independently of the others. This actually makes this makes software development a lot simpler because, for example, if we have an error with uh, with our function that calculates averages, it's not going to be caused by the code that's involved in some other unrelated functionality like that which accepts an Excel file. So there's less interference between different parts of the program, 
which makes it easier to, easier to develop them and also to find errors when something goes wrong. Now, those are the main concepts in what is going to be a short topic. We're going to go ahead and solve some practice problems to give you an idea of how these concepts are going to be applied to the A-level exam. So our first question, a system is being developed to help manage a car hire business. A customer may hire a car for a number of days. An abstract model needs to be produced. A, explain the process of abstraction and state four items of data that should be stored each time a car is hired. So when we're asked to explain abstraction on the A-level exam, generally it's gonna be some form of abstraction involves filtering out uh, data that's not of use or boiling down. It's, we can also say that it's going to involve just focusing on the most important aspects of a program. If you look at the mark scheme, abstraction is used to filter out information or data that is not necessary for the task or to keep only information or data that is necessary for the task. That is like the most common and acceptable answer to this question. Now state four items of data that should be stored each time a car is hired. So we have a program that's dealing with a customer hiring a car for a certain number of days and then bringing it back. So if we just like think about this from com like a common sense perspective, like what would need to happen from a business perspective, first we would need like customer data, right? Um, next we would need the car data. We wanna keep track of what car is being hired out or rented out. Then we probably need like a start date for when that car is being hired out and an end date for when that car should be returned. Just, I mean, that's just thinking about from a business perspective. And indeed, if we go to the March scheme, car details, customer details, start date, return date, and then cost of hire, which is something we didn't cover, but that's okay. This was one point right here, and two of these would be one point, and another two of these would be one point for three points for the whole question, or for A at least of this question. Now, our next uh, question is identify two operations that would be required to process the car hire data. And again, you just need to think about a program that would do this and like how, what things you need to do. And I'm gonna write down really, just like really two very simple operations. One is input car details and the other is input customer details. And that's pretty much all you need. Now, if you look at some other examples of possible answers, we have our first two, input payment details, create a hire, return a hire. It's basically the, the software that would deal with ending a hire or creating a hire. Uh, one that allows us to look at the car status, cancel a hire, or the operations behind processing payment, or even calculating just the, the cost of the hire. Now we have another example that's slightly more complex. A school has a library system which allows students to borrow books for a length of time. Info information relating to students and books is stored in text files. We have some student information that will be stored. Uh, we have some book information that will be stored. And... That's pretty much it for just the overall description. A program helps the staff to manage the borrowing of books. A new module needs to be written to generate emails to send stu to students who have an overdue book. So students who are sent an email are prevented from borrowing any more books until the overdue book is returned. So this is our module. This might be a function. This might be um, a class. Like, I mean, there are different ways that we could handle this. Anyways, the process of abstraction has been used when designing a new module. State the purpose of, apply of applying abstraction to this problem. Again, filter out any information unnecessary for the task. Um, include only essential information to solve the problem. Now identify one item of information that is required and one item that is not required in the new module. Justify your choices. So what information do we need to actually, uh, to basically actually conduct the process that this module is responsible for? So what, what information does this module need? So we have all of this information right here. And we have all this information right here. So what do we need and what do we don't need? So one piece of information we need is probably an email, the student email address, right? Because we need to be able to send them an email. Probably an, a piece of information we don't need is like a student home address. Like, why do we need that? So that, those can be your answers. Um, we don't need a home address because we're not doing anything involving their home. Like we're not sending them a, sending them a letter or anything. We need the email address to be able to notify them they have an, they have an overdue book. So item required would be email address. I'm not gonna write out the whole justification because I just explained it, but I do wanna write down the answer right here. And let's take a look at the mark scheme. So here we have a few that could be required, student name or email address, although I don't really know, I feel like email address would be more important. Return or issue date to figure out whether it's overdue and then book title to like identify the book. Not required would be any of these things which have like no bearing at all on an overdue book. Now next identify two operations that would be required to process data when an overdue book is returned. So what are two operations we need to engage in to process an overdue book being returned? 
what do we do when the overdue book is returned? So when the overdue book is returned, if we go back to our description right here, then, well, students are basically not allowed to borrow any books until the overdue book is returned. So you probably want to remove a block on that on that person checking out books. Also, I mean, we might, we might want to send an email acknowledging that the book has been received. So if there's any issues, then the student um, is able to just show the email and say, hey, I returned this book. I don't know why I can't check out anymore. So we can say remove block and maybe send a confirmation email. Again, this is sort of more common sense and you can write answers that aren't on the mark scheme as long as they make sense in the context of the module. Some examples include clearing the loan, which is what we did, take the student off block, um, update loan history, send acknowledgement to the student when book is returned. Again, these are just examples, but anything that kind of makes sense in the context of the module would be acceptable. We have our last example here. The fitness club has a computerized membership system. The fitness club offers a number of different exercise classes. The following information is stored for each club member. Uh, so when an exercise class is planned, a new module will send personalized text messages to each member who has expressed an interest in that exercise. Members wishing to join the class send a text message back. Members may decide not to receive future text messages by replying with a message stop. So this module is going to handle functionality for presumably a single member at a time, um, notifying them if there is a, uh, if there's a class planned in which they have an interest. Our first question, the process of abstraction is used to filter out unnecessary information. State one advantage of applying abstraction to this problem. And again, we're removing any information that's not necessary to, the, to solving the problem, which can mean that just planning and solving the problem would be simpler, perhaps more efficient, uh, make it, a solution would be easier to design, implement, or solve. So the advantage of abstraction. Next question, identify three items of information that will be required by the new module. Justify your choices with reference to the given scenario. Okay, so we want to send a personalized text message. And if it's personalized, we're probably going to need the name of the person we're sending it to. So name of, of uh, member. Um, we're going to need a phone number, right? Because it's a text message. Um, although, like, who, who does that? Well, I guess people send text messages. messages. Anyways. Um, also, we would need um, the exercise that they are interested in. Um, we don't know if they are interested in multiple exercises. I guess we can't. they can be, but we need an int we need a list or we need probably a list of exercises they're interested in. So we could say name for personalization, phone number to send a text message, and exercises interested in uh, to be able to know when to send them a text message. So next, identify two operations that will be, will be required to process data when the new, med new module receives a text message back from a member. So if you go back here, um, I mean, there are really two options. If a text message is, is received from the member, then they might want to join the class. Otherwise, if it's stopped, they might want, not want future text messages. So those are two operations we'd have to address. So operation one, um, what was it, sign up for a class? Yeah, like sign up member for class. And operation two, uh, remove members uh, member from contact list. And let's see what the mark team has to say. Um, yep, yeah, add member to a list of those interested in new class or remove the member from future SMS messages. Cool, okay. Now this brings us to the end of this particular video. I know this is a short topic. Uh, I'm kind of happy it is because this again is the first video in the series. If you wanna see more videos like this covering, covering paper two, please like this video and subscribe to the channel and write a comment as well. So I know exactly what it is that you want. Um, I'm just going to be continuing to work through the the uh, paper two content, um, probably at a slow pace, but it's going to happen. Anyways, have a nice day and good luck.